Good morning, and welcome to this morning's reflection. In her essay, An Expedition to the Pole, Annie Dillard describes the provisions carried along by 19th century explorers in their search for the North Pole. And she writes, Each sailing vessel carried an auxiliary steam engine and a 12-day supply of coal for the entire projected two or three years' voyage. Instead of additional coal, each ship made room for a 1,200-volume library, a hand organ playing 50 tunes, china place settings for officers and men, cut glass wine goblets, and sterling silver flatware. The expedition carried no special clothing for the Arctic, only the uniforms of Her Majesty's Navy. Years later, Inuit Eskimos came across the frozen remains of the expedition. Men, dressed in their finery, and pulling a lifeboat laden with place settings of sterling silver and chocolate. Their naivety is almost beyond comprehension. But perhaps it will motivate us to be better outfitted for our own journey. What does one take on an expedition of the heart. What do we need to be prepared for? Our journey begins with desire. Desire for another life. Desire sets us on our way. Yet what will keep desire alive? Enemies of desire lurk all along the way. Fear, self-contempt, disappointment, these and a hundred others crowd along the road, ready to extinguish the flame of the heart. Who knows what dangers lie ahead? Hamlet, that famous prince of Denmark, gave poetic expression to the dilemma we all face. Why press on when there is so little to look forward to? Who would burdens bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life, but that the dread of something after death? The undiscovered country from whose born no traveller returns puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. In other words, it is better to stay in the safety of the camp than venture forth on a wing and a prayer. Who knows what dangers lie ahead? This was the counsel of the ten faithless spies who were sent in to have a look at the promised land when the Jews came out of Egypt. Only two of the twelve, Joshua and Caleb, saw things differently. Their hearts were captured by a vision of what might be, and they urged the people to press on. But their voices were drowned by the fears of the other spies, and Israel wandered for another 40 years. Without the anticipation of better things ahead, we will have no heart for the journey. And one of the most poisonous things of all is when the evil one whispers simply and plainly in our heads, things will never change. 
And that lie kills expectation, trapping our heart forever in the present. To keep desire alive and flourishing, we must renew our vision for what lies ahead. Things will not always be like this. Jesus has promised to make things new. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard all that God has in store for his lovers, which does not mean we have no clue, so don't even try to imagine. But rather, you cannot outdream God. Desire is kept alive by imagination, and that is the antidote to resignation. We will need imagination, which is to say, we all need hope. So life on the road requires recollection of God's past deeds on our behalf, and his promise of continued faithfulness. We will need courage, and we will need patience, and those are strengthened by remembering. We will need memory, which is to say, we will need faith. Faith looks back and draws courage. Hope looks ahead and keeps desire alive. And meantime, in the meantime, we need one more item for the journey. To appreciate what it may be, we have to step back and ask, what is all this for? The resurrection of our heart, the discovery of our role in the larger story. Why do we pursue these things? If we say we seek all this for our own sake, we are right back where we started, lost in our own story. Jesus said that when a person lives merely to preserve his life, he loses it altogether. Rather, he said, give your life away and discover life as it was always meant to be. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way. My way to finding yourself your true self. Matthew 16 and verse 25. Self-preservation, the theme of every small story, is so deeply wrong because it violates the Trinity whose members live to bring glory to the others. The road we travel will take us into the battle to restore beauty in all things, chief among them the hearts of those who know. We grow in glory so that we might assist others in doing the same. We give our glory to increase others. In order to fill the purpose of our journey, we will need a passion to increase glory. We will need love. Memory, imagination and passion. These we must keep close at hand if we are to see the journey to its end. But the road is not entirely rough. There are oases along the way. And it would be a dreadful mistake to assume that our beloved is only waiting for us at the end of the road. No, he comes with us along the path. Amen.